A new report by Britain's Growth and Development Commission offered a mix of both good and bad news for poor countries. Some of the countries in the report have achieved middle income status and place uh, once plagued by conflict and instability have shown signs of improvement. But the report also notes that the number of people living in what it, it calls fragile states is growing. Viewers Maria Diallo has our report. In presenting the report, the chair and co-chair of the Commission on State Fragility, Growth and Development say money that has been poured into the developing world has been helpful but has not always solved the problems facing some countries. The assumption that because there is money, there will be solutions is one of the things we have to revisit. Uh, money is needed, but in places like South Sudan, actually money could be a problem. As nations emerge from conflict and instability, moving swiftly to elections may not always be the best solution, says Commission Chair, former British Prime Minister. South Sudan being perhaps quite a good example. I think part of the international community thought, right, OK, we solved the problem. There's going to be Sudan, a predominantly Muslim country. There's going to be South Sudan, a predominantly Christian country. It's going to have money from, from aid and oil, and, and let's get on with elections, and it'll all be, be fine. And, of course, the fundamental settlement between uh, the tribal cleavages in South Sudan wasn't thought through properly. Tens of thousands of people have been killed in the South Sudan conflict and more displaced in a war that has often been fought along ethnic lines. But fragility is not always related to conflict, says Donald Kaburuka, it's former head of the African Development Bank. So fragility is the inability of the state to perform its core functions, from security, delivering services, from education to health. Any state unable to perform its core functions is by definition uh, fragile. It could be because of uh, conflict, it could be the environment, it could be simply dysfunctionality like in Haiti. Kabaruka notes the number of people living in fragile states is increasing and says different approaches may be necessary. From Syria, Yemen, Libya, the Sahel, Somalia. And uh, the current solutions are not working. Billions of men have been poured into these countries. Uh, a lot of uh, attempts have been made, but none of them seems to be working. There are only a few countries uh, which have been able to escape fragility. And therefore, what we're saying here is uh, we need a paradigm shift, we need a step change. It's not always about money, it's not always about conflict, uh, it's multidimensional. And the recommendations we make are fundamentally to put the people of the country in the driver's seat and not have prescriptive approaches to fragility. Some recommendations focus on local, not international priorities and reconciliation first before elections. Despite huge successes for international development assistance, the commission says progress remains slow in the most fragile states where by 2030, half of the world's poor will be living. Mariama Diallo, VOA News, Washington.